Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Road and Geekery. Today I am looking at interactive video stylization using few shot patch based training. What on earth does this do? Well, they demonstrate how to train an appearance translation network from scratch using only a few stylized exemplars while implicitly preserving temporal consistency. This leads to a video stylization framework that supports real time inference, parallel processing, and random access to an arbitrary output frame. Fantastic stuff. Now, there's also a little video down at the bottom of this paper, which I recommend you have a look at. You can see there, there's the artist, and they've got a camera, and there's the, the frame there that they're drawing over. It's lined up with all these special markers. As they draw over the frame, that style gets transferred onto the video in real time awesome stuff. So over to GitHub where the code for this is and there you go. Now this runs on both Windows and Linux. Obviously I'm using Ubuntu 20 right now and a couple of things to note. This is the core code only. So when you download this uh, testing data and pre-trained models and things uh, you'll find that there are some extra directories in there that I'm not including in my video. That's because the code for those isn't in here either so not really much point including it uh, and yes the real-time interactive bit isn't in there either but you can still use it it essentially very much in the same way as EB Synth. So, you know, you can play with a video, style some frames, and then apply a style to every single frame. Now, there's a few extra utilities that I use along the way while I'm doing this as well. And uh, one of them is FFmpeg, of course, uh, just to turn the video into the individual frames. And then back again, I also used some neural style transfer on those frames and uh, convert there just to make a white mask. Now, before you can do anything, you need your data sets and training all set up. So it's essentially sort of split into two. So you've got the training and generation. Now training, you've just got your few shots from the video, your mask files, and the styled version of those frames. And then in the generation, you've got all your video frames and uh, some masks if you want to use them. And they have to be set up like this with their special names. So something underscore train, something underscore gen, and then input filtered mask output, input filtered and mask. So if I have a look over here, here's an empty one for training that I use. I just copy this over, just use that like a, a skeleton setup. So input filtered, mask with a mask in it and output where the styled frames will go. So here is the video that I'm going to style all the way through. We'll just have a quick look at that. So then we've got someone spinning in amongst some leaves. Fantastic stuff. So over to the train. Now I've got five different keyframes in here and the, the mask each time are just white. So yeah, let's just apply the style to everything. And for each of those frames, we have transformed her into some corn. So there's just a few frames in there just to make it sure we get each side of the face and the front and the back. Okay, great stuff. So once you've got all those set up, then there are a few other things just to be aware of. And one of the main ones is this log interval. So every whatever you set log interval to batches, it will output into that directory. Now, if you're using the default like it has down here, it's got a log interval of 1000. Um, then I found that's actually quite low because you'll typically want to train maybe up to about 80,000. And if you've got lots and lots of images in your gen directory, if your gen directory is very big, then every thousand um, iterations, it's going to be, you know, um, duplicating that each time. So you may want to uh, pump that log interval up a little bit. Um, I use mine at about 10,000 and that seems pretty good. So I'm just going to run that command that they've got in there. So that's basically your config points to the config file that is in the repository anyway. So reference p.yaml, the data root there, that's the data we've got in here. So that's the spin training and log interval, like I've said, 10,000 and the logs folder, that is where it's going to output a load of stuff. So if I get that training now, we should see some magic happening. There we go. Okay, so it's starting to do some things. We're seeing the directories created there. So we've got the logs directory in here. Now this is where the model will eventually appear once it's trained. And also while it is going through, 
it will go through, like I said, every image that you have got in your input filter directory. Now, the first time it goes through always looks pretty much the same. It's like this sort of bland. You can almost see the outlines of things going on there. If I show you here, so here it's going through every frame, just generating and rendering those. So yeah, if you've got several thousand in there, you will want to set a high value for that log interval. Right, so I'm gonna leave that for about, uh, probably about 35 minutes now. Um, so I will see you when this has finished. Let's modify some time, shall we? And there we go, 20,000, that is more than enough for now. Okay, so let's have a look at what it's created. So we've got the two models that it saves there. The initial one, one and two, the proper ones, but also in this res underscore underscore p, we've got a little preview there. So that's 10,000. There's a preview of 20,000. And in these directories, as mentioned, is the particular generation. So we've got all the files there, the 10 and 20,000. So if I go back to my utilities, do a little one of these turn that into a video. So the one I want here is the 20,000 and I am getting it from the spin directory there. And I am going to turn it into a person spin corn. There we go. So there's a quick video. Let's have a little look at all those frames now. So after doing just a couple, person spin corn, there we are. Oh, right at the top, there we go. There she is, spinning away. Yeah, pretty cool, isn't it? So as you can see, there's not a lot of the uh, the usual popping and flickering that you get. There's a, there's a little bit, it's a, it's a bit patchy, so to speak. But uh, yes, it does rather a good job. And as you can see, there are also lots of other videos here that I have had a little play with. So what you can do once you've got your model is you can try and use that on other things as well. Sometimes it will work and eh, maybe, maybe sometimes not so much. So let's have a look at the generation. Now I have got a, another video that happens to be somebody else spinning. So I'm going to create another folder with that in. So this is spin two and in that directory there should be spin two. Okay. And we'll put that to data spin, oops, spin two. Okay, there we go. So that has got spin two there input filtered that's got all the video frames again and this is this is an entirely different video as you can see but it's still got some similar things it's got some green and it's got a, a person spinning round so let's see how this model does on something that it hasn't been trained on at all how do we do that well I've got this generate down here pop that down there that is obviously also on here as well so generate so you pick which checkpoint you're going to use the data root, the input and the output there, and also using your GPU. So the pre-trained model I want to use is spin train logs reference P. So it's not in my pre-trained model. So we'll do data spin, oops, train logs reference p model 000002 and the data this time is spin 2 and the same input directory there and data this one here is also spin 2 so we'll put that into the output directory and we will obviously use the graphics card now this is quite a lot trick uh, quicker because obviously it's not having to train, it's just using that model and going through. So we can have a little look in this directory. 
here in the output directory we can see exactly what is going on. So there we go. We've got we've got some spinning and there's a little bit of corn going on there. There's a little bit of corn going on there, but not a lot. So we'll just we'll just stop that one for now. But uh, that's how you can generate using one of the pre-trained models as well. So let's go back and have a look at these other videos just to see what particular things happen. So one of the first things I trained on was a street. And that is project one. Oh, actually, no, there's a dog here. First of all, uh, the street was the second one. So the dog I tried here with a dog and basically just turning everything brown. So that was a quite a short video and that, uh, that showed that it was quite smooth. So you don't get the usual popping and stuff like you do. And then I tried it on a completely different dog video and that was okay. That, that was fine. That was, uh, it was happy doing that. It's a little bit there, but uh, for the most part, yeah, that, that worked on another dog video. Uh, so then I was looking at project two, which is a street. So I tried various different styles on here just to see how it handled uh, the motion. And uh, as you can see, it does, it does quite well. It does quite well. So here's another version of that same street with a bit more, a uh, bit more flicking on some of the heads here. It's a, it's quite a harsh style transfer that one. So uh, yeah, that did quite well and uh, sort of black and white version. So that, that comes out quite nicely as well. It's uh, it's got some flicking here, but it's uh, got kind of a, an ink feel to it, so it doesn't feel too bad in in black and white. And then there's a, a ge more geometric version of it there. Lots of colours going on. And uh, here I used a, a map for the style transfer, so that's a little bit more pops out a bit more. And uh, this one is using lots and lots and lots of different styles in different keyframes. So I did each keyframe in this was in a different style. So it sort of uh, starts off in one style and it's another style in the middle and a completely different style again towards the end. So that, that was that was quite weird. And then uh, there's a, a mosaic style, which uh, also I think looks quite cool. Now again, when I tried that on a different street, I tried the, uh, the black and white one there and uh, using that model on a different sort of street video again looked okay so yeah not too bad again there's a little bit a little bit of patchiness going on some of the areas that weren't in the previous previous part but uh, yeah lots of it seems to match there so that that looked that looked pretty good now uh, another thing I tried was something so ridiculous that uh, it couldn't possibly work and that's a really fast bike ride so again there's that black and white uh, model but on a totally different style of video and, uh, and it, it looks all right, but there's yeah, there's a there's a lot of patches, a lot of patches going on there. Now, other things I tried were um, getting rid of people's legs because why not? Why not? So this is where you see that, uh, that temporal consistency coming in, because you can still see uh, legs no matter how you try to uh, to patch them out. You're always still going to get uh, some of the original coming back through. And uh, here's one where I was just doing part of the video and uh, that's just a one frame, single keyframe, even though the face has these various different poses. So you can see when the face changes angle, uh, it's really not sure what to do there. So uh, yeah, if, if you use one keyframe and it, it looks it looks all right for a little while, but then yeah, that, that really needs another two or three, maybe five keyframes in total if there's lots going on. Now, there's also a couple of um, really interesting ones. So um, I tried to remove the head on this person walking around and uh, yeah, that, that was okay. So if I, uh, you know, if I fill the, the area in with something, then that, that's all right. You know, I can change it that way. And that, that was 50,000 and uh, that's what it looks like on 100,000. Now 100,000 is interestingly, I don't know, it, it, some of the hair comes through more so it doesn't seem to hold that pattern as well. And then at uh, 200,000, again the hair put, sort of pokes through even more often now and as does the face. So yeah, sometimes training more and it, it, it's not, not quite as good as training less. But when I tried to remove her head completely, got this uh, got this nice 
sort of weird pattern. It's it's because I copied the wallpaper over over her head uh, to try and remove it so it would just blend in with the background. And uh, yeah, got that really really strange effect going on there, which then, as I trained higher, turned into that instead. So you got these uh, sort of blob following her around. And then even higher again, so up at 60k, it, it turned colour back into white and then disappeared over there. Um, so yeah, and again, all the time, you can still see a little bit of uh, the original video going on there. So it's uh, it's difficult to completely transfer stuff on, or maybe if I go up to uh, above 300,000 or something like that, then yeah. But uh, yeah, it uh, certainly seems very good and lots and lots to play with there. So highly recommended few shot patch based training. Have a play. Rodent out.